If I've done something to you, just tell me what I've done to you. Is Callum not with you? No. But you didn't do anything to me. Have you been rowing? I don't think we've been rowing. Sounds like you've been rowing. I just don't like you no more. But you liked me yesterday. What made me want to do it was that the project came to me from Martin McDonough Strait. <laughs> That's the entire truth. Not the first person to say this. He's an extraordinary director. It's really quite common knowledge. I had him on a list of directors to work with. He was like, do you want to do it? I was like, eh, yeah. He's recognised as one of the most extraordinary voices in theatre and in cinema now. Go on back to your own gang now, Pollock. I'm serious now. Serious, are you? The benefit of having him as writer-director is he's very sure of everything and he's extremely specific with the notes. Hey, what the hell's going on with you, me feckin' brother? He's dull, Siobhan. I mean, but he's always been dull. Writing a script, for me, it's all about the character and, and the dialogue and, and the situations. The storyboarding process is a major second phase of the storytelling. The cinema of it, I get when I storyboard it. Martin turned up with a pile of papers like that. His hand-drawn storyboards. Every single shot in that film is storyboarded. The storyboards were the same as his writing, but as a director, really clear idea of what he wanted. And why aren't you talking to Parik Sullivan no more? That wouldn't be a sin now, would it, Father? It wouldn't be a sin, no. But it's not very nice either, is it? There is room to explore and to find things out within the process. This whole process in the middle is what's important. So to have that a, a director who understands that is huge. I always want to explore the truth without hiding any of its ugliness, without shielding us from how dark these characters might be or how dark they might get. Please don't talk to me. No more, Parik. I'm begging you. You'll have an instinct and he'll want you to explore that and then he'll have an instinct to ask you to explore that. There's a rhythm to it. One boring man, you're all feckin' boring. With your piddling grievances over nothing, you're all feckin' boring. I've worked with him for so many years. I would just do it out of wanting to be a part of something that's brilliant, because they're always brilliant. The common DNA between them all, of course, is Martin's, as I say, incredible articulation of thoughts and ideas and emotions and that meeting point between comedy and tragedy. He's incredibly deft at that. Does this make things clearer to you? Not really, no. Martin, in all his films, is walking a tonal type rote, and he's one of the very few filmmakers that I know who you know will do it with absolute confidence and success. That he knows the type rope, he enjoys it, and it is a delicious, crackling experience. You used to be nice. Or did you never used to be? Maybe you never used to be. The sensibility that made this writing happen, that created this writing, can follow it through in the direction. I don't know how to describe it, but. Uh... It's always when you step away that you realise that you're working with one of the greats. I used to think you were the nicest of them. Turns out you're just the same as them. Yeah, he's just, he's kind of, you know, he's a master. He's, he's, he's just brilliant, really. Let's just call it quits. We won't call it quits. We'll call it the start. To our graves, we're taking this. Holland's sonny Larry. Didn't you? And he used to be the best of friends. We're still the best of friends. No, you're not. Who says we're not? Sit somewhere else. Now, if I've done something to you, just tell me what I've done to you. When you didn't do anything to me. I just don't like you no more. But you liked me yesterday. Why does he not want to be friends with you no more? Why is he 12? What the hell's going on with you, me feckin' brother? He's dull, Siobhan. I mean, but he's always been dull. The other night, two hours, you spent talking to me about the things you found in your little donkey shite that day. Well, it wasn't me little donkey shite. It was me pony shite, which shows how much you were listening. If you don't stop talking to me... Colin! And if you don't stop bothering me, I have a set of shears at home. And each time you bother me from this day on, I'll take those shears and I'll take one of my fingers off with them and I'll give that finger to you until I have no fingers left. Does this make things clearer to you? Not really, no. Starting from now. But shush like, Polly. You know, shush like. Yeah, I'd shush like.
Would you not want him to have to do the one finger to see if he was bluffing, like? No, we wouldn't. Because worse goes to worse, he can still play the fiddle with four fingers, I bet ya. Go on back to your own gang now, Parry. I'm talking to me! Are ya? Why aren't you talking to Parry no more? That wouldn't be a sin, no, would it, Father? No, but it's not very nice either, is it? Do you know who we remember for how nice they was in the 17th century? Who? Absolutely no one. Yeah, we all remember the music at the time. Everyone to a man knows Mozart's name. I don't, so there goes that theory. Can't be waiting around for any more of this madness. Let's just call it quits. We won't call it quits. We'll call it the start. <laughs>